Okay, all those of you with New Year's resolutions about running, this is for you because this is about the stretches that you are skipping before you go for a run. When you're just running out the door and going for a run, there's some stretches that you should be doing as a runner before you go out the door to maintain your mobility, injury prevention, stop those niggles, and to improve your overall flexibility and performance. So I'm gonna break it down to four things, four essentials that I do that I want you guys to try and do to help you on your journey as a runner this year. So first thing I want you to work on is making sure you're working on your hip flexor, quadriceps, and groin. Now how do you do that all in one stretch? Easy, all you need is a bench. I would go for this position here. Now, make first thing, make sure this is a soft mat. Some of you guys might have sore knees to lean on, so make sure it's a soft mat or a pillow, something like that underneath your knee. Start off getting yourself in a position here, putting your foot up on a sofa or a chair. Easiest thing, all you need, sofa or a chair. Now you need a weight bench like this, sofa or a chair. Now you can choose where they have your foot like this position. If it's a wall, have it like that, okay? But that position there, sofa bench. Because if it's a wall, it's gonna push in too much plantar flexion. So just put your foot back into that position. So, sofa bench, there you go. Now, what you do is you go into this position. Now you're thinking hip flexor, right? You're thinking, oh, he's gonna do hip flexor stretch and quadriceps. No, what I do is I try and combine hip flexor, quadriceps, and groin all the same go. So what you do is you go close as you can here to get as vertical there, because you're actually gonna come forward. Because right? if you have your knee too far away, when you come forward, you lose some of the stretch on your quads. All right, So just come back a bit, so you're sort of super vertical, to the point where like you couldn't even go up. Then what you do, lunge forward. So now what you've got is a stretch on your quads and your hip flexor. And then you come down into this hip flexion external rotation stretch. So it's a combination of a quadriceps stretch, hip flexion, hip flexor, sorry, hip flexion external rotation, which is going to get your groin as well. So into here, and then what you do from that point, weight bear through your hands, drop your pelvis forward as far as you can go that way. So you really have to weight bear through your hands to do it, because you want to totally relax everything on the left and the right hand sides. Okay, you can't be sort of holding yourself back, you've got to drop it forward, try and really skin to that position. Now once you're in there, if you can, add on a butt squeeze on this side. So if I clench that buttock there, I'm going to get a reciprocal inhibition on my hip flexor here. I'm going to get way more stretch on the front leg. Oh, sorry, the back leg here on the front. So in that position, if you can clench your buttock, some people say, I can't clench my buttock. Well, you're probably too tight in the front, but or you don't have enough sort of glute power here. But if you can clench that, you'll get a way better effect on this leg and sit there for a minute. Again, you're going to do three each side if you've got time. I suggest you make time. So people tend to just run out the door, at least get one round and try for two. Three would be better, okay? But making sure you're getting through all these four exercises in both sides. So once you've done that side, do the other side. It just may mean you have to go up 20 minutes earlier than if you're going for a run in the morning, all right? There's your hip flexion, quadriceps, combination type stretch that just, for a runner, is the biggest bang for your buck, okay? Make sure you do that. Second thing I want you to work on is your glute and your external rotation hip mobility, which is pushing yourself into a pigeon stretch. Now, most people can't do pigeon stretches on the floor. We suggest you do it up on a table, especially if you're starting out with this stuff. It could be your table. It could be your sofa that you do it on, or a chair. Sofa's probably the easiest because it's in the lounge room. So, what you do, put your foot, if you're facing the sofa, if I'm gonna do my left side, I want my left leg in line with my right leg, so my feet are in line like that, okay? Now, when I come forward, what I want to aim for is, again, you do the same thing about weight bearing through your hands. Step back with that right foot, drop down. Now, what I don't want you to do is drop forward into there like that and push your knee forward. Sort of cheating a little bit, okay? What I want you to do is drop down over that sort of your left foot. So you come down over the left foot, bend the right knee, and sink until you feel that on that left hand side. Okay, so my knee is not compromised that position. If I don't have enough knee range, I'm still gonna be fine in this position. I'm aiming, as I get better, to get my knee closer and closer and closer to the bed. The closer I get, the more stretch I'm gonna get through my hip. I just gotta weight bear myself, hold myself up here, relax my pelvis, relax that left hand side, get my glute stretched out, 
get that whole external rotation sorted as well. The great thing about this is if you've got a if you're a runner with an old lateral ankle sprain, you'll really feel that tension out there. So when you're in this position here, you'll probably feel that old sprain on the outside of your ankle, that scar tissue there. So try and get in there and stretch that out a little bit as well. Not too much, but just get in there and stretch that out. You'll, you'll notice that one, okay? So there's two of the most important things taken care of. Third thing in a row, calves, can't forget that. Now, that one, you'll need a step. What I suggest you do is work on just a stair in your house. It could be a step off a gutter. It could be the, a sliding door you open, you go off it. Whatever it takes, just a little bit of something like this, okay? Up on the step, one at a time. Keep the ball of your foot on the edge of the step. And you listen, you've got to have shoes with this because you need the grip of the step. Take one foot forward or even off. Push your knee straight. Drop your heel to the floor. Pretend like you're putting your entire body weight down through your heel and your Achilles. Once you've got a little bit of stretch there, what I want you to do is then, with your knees sort of going backwards and going straight, you push your hip forward until you really feel that come right up through your calf into your gastrox. It's up in here that I want you stretching the most. Okay, the biggest bang for your buck is stretch your gastrox out. That's where most of the tears happen. It's connected to your Achilles, drops the tension off that. So work on flexibility of your calf. It also gets a little bit of ankle flexibility, which helps you, especially post ankle sprain. But just make sure when you come forward, you don't bend your knee, you keep it straight. If you bend your knee, it's still less. We're focusing on calves, okay? Keeping that weight forward. Again, a minute, all right? Both sides, three of them if you can, all right? Then, I say if you've got time, try and make time. Try and work on some lower back flexion because, you know, if you're running and you're really tired in extension here, okay, you need some release through there and some hamstring work. What I suggest you do, combine the two, is put one leg up. If I'm going to stretch my right hand hamstring, right side lower back, keep your knee bent to take away the neural tension component, keep it bent, come forward, like almost like that, child's pose stretch. You don't have to wait there through this time, you, you wait through your foot. Once you've got to that position there, where I'm sort of pretty, my chest is pretty close to my leg, because I want my lower back and my thoracic rounded out as much as I can. Then what I do is I push, if it's my right leg, I'm going to push my bum that way. So I'm going to push backwards, but stay forward, chest stays on my thigh, and then that'll crank me through here and just sit there in that position, stretching out my hamstring and my back's in nice and flexion. That's gonna give me a lot more flexibility going this way, okay, which will make me free up in the run. So, there's my sort of four. If you're a new to running, maybe you're an existing runner and you're restarting your running for the year, these four, your biggest bang for your buck, if you're really time poor, make sure you get those done prior so you'll loosen up the run, stop those little niggles, stop that injury prevention, or start that injury prevention, prevent those injuries. See you next time.